moved to the Arctic Circle. I thought I'd go out of my mind. I tripped. All I could think about was you and that woodchopper, huddled together through raging blizzards, buried under ten feet of snow. You and him alone, where the nights are six months long. So I, I joined the Foreign Legion. But I'm back now. Forgive me, Jeanette. Oh, please. Oh, Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh. Oh, sorry, Trey. I didn't mean to wake you up. Well, it's okay. I'm glad you did, because I was having this terrible dream that I fell asleep in the frozen food section of a supermarket. Hey, what you got there? A new Fred Barasta. Nice. You know, I didn't get a wink of sleep last night. Remember that cold I was getting yesterday? Well, it kept me awake all night with the sniffles. That's too bad. Why didn't you stay home today? Well, I'm not really sick. I'm just a little sleepy. And how come Oscar's new friend can't come out and play? Well, he has to get used to the temperature of the water in the tank gradually. He might have gotten a chill on the way over here. There are some fish that have anti in their bodies, but I don't think this guy's one of them. Hey, what do you think we should call him? Jeanette. Jeanette? Mm -hmm. Welcome to your new home, Jeanette. Three, two, one! have many ingenious ways of protecting themselves from extreme cold <coughs> and from extreme heat. Some animals even hibernate all winter long. Please wake me up first thing in the spring. There you go. Hey, Oscar, this is Jeanette. Jeanette, this is Oscar. Come on in, Frank. Hey, Lee, how you doing? Shh, Trini's sleeping. Oh, okay. Hey, Lisa, this is Frank Bowman. Hi. He's offered to give us some advice on replanting the greenhouse. Hey, you guys don't have to whisper. I'm just resting my eyes. Oh, okay. Let me have your coat. Oh, these are really nice. Yeah, he brought along some cacti to show us. Do you specialize in cacti? Yes, I do. Yeah. You see these small ones right now and out in the desert, they get to be tremendous plants. Yeah. These are the spines? Do they serve any kind of protection for the plant also? Because I noticed they're really sharp. Yeah. Yes, they do. And the thing is, one of the uh, purposes of the spines is not only a means of protection from animals, but a protection from the sun. Because the hotter, the brighter, the sunny it is, the more spines a plant has. This particular one grows in an area where the sun is intense. And then we have another type, like this. You'll notice that it is not as heavily spined as the others. It grows in areas where the sun is not as intense as it would be uh, with the other plant. Wow. Why are cacti different from other plants? Well, primarily because they can go for longer periods of time without water than the average plant. And to save water, basically what they do is they go into a period of dormancy during the wintertime, uh, where, like a bear hibernating, they don't eat they mainly live off the moisture that they got during the regular growing season. Now, do all these cacti come from different areas of the country? Because I noticed this one has a different shape, and it's got yeah. this red thing, and this one looks like a plant. Yeah. Well, you'll find that uh, cacti grow as far north as uh, Saskatchewan, Canada, in deserts really? there. Right? And then cacti oh. also grow down in the jungles of South America. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought cactus only grew in hot weather, in warm climates. Well, so, like the desert. Right. Yeah, well, a desert is hot. It's hot during the day. But like most hot places, there has to be that cooling off period and you can drop down to freezing in the desert almost every night, even in a summer period of time. You have a lot of plants in your house? Oh, I am about 6,000. Oh, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> That's not Only 6,000. Uh, Where do you keep them? <laughs> in a greenhouse. I have my own greenhouse. And the thing is, it's a hobby that you can really get involved in. I, my, I got more involved in it in high school. You know, it was a science project in school. And I said, well, hey, I like this. I think I'd like to do this for the rest of my life. So this is what I'm doing. I've never seen so many different varieties of cacti before. Do you know that out in the desert, they grow to be magnificent specimens? Really big? Mm -hmm. Oh, really big. Some two and a half to three stories high.
These creatures live in the Sonora Desert of Arizona, where I'm visiting Dr. Manuel Moles and his associates at the Sonora Desert Museum. What kind of cactus are these big ones that are growing around here? These big cactus are saguaro cactus. Saguaro? Saguaro. Saguaro cactus. It's a kind of cactus that's found only here in the Sonoran Desert. What's so special about it? Well, it's one of the biggest cactuses, probably the tallest cactus in any of the deserts. Well, how does it survive in the desert? Well, they're adapted for catching any surface water that comes along. These cactus have a dense network of roots extending all around, and any water that would wash down the surface of the soil would be caught by the cactus and then stored in the, uh, the body of the cactus, this big stem, one giant water storage reservoir. Where do you think we'll be able to find a Gila monster? Well, they should be just coming out now because the heat of the day is almost over. There's one. Oh, it's pretty. Are they poisonous? It's not really known how strong the poison is. What kind of food do these guys eat? We believe they eat mostly small rodents and small birds, animals that can't run away from them. You think I could get to pick them up? Here, why don't you use this glove? This will give you protection. How do they get their water? It's often very difficult for them to find standing water. They go for prolonged periods without water, but they probably get a lot of water out of the food they eat. They've adapted to living hot temperatures by staying underground if it's too hot, as well as staying underground in the winter since it's too cold on the surface. If it were a contest between myself and this Gila monster right here about how long we, which one of us could live without a water in the desert, who would win? Well, Trini, I think the Gila monster probably would because Gila monsters are living in places where it may not rain for several months at a time. Mm -hmm. I don't think he could last more than a couple of days. Later on in the day, we went looking for another supposedly ferocious creature, the scorpion. I think I wanted to find one. Dead Saguaro. Be careful. Something like this. Oh, look. Uh-huh. That's a big one. Looks like it's plastic. There's a waterproof coating that completely covers the exoskeleton of the scorpions. That reduces the amount of water that it loses to the atmosphere. Oh, so it sort of keeps the water inside mm -hmm, its body? Mm -hmm. so they can lose up to 30% of their uh, body water and still uh, live and revive pretty well. We lose 10% and we get deathly ill. Why is it hiding underneath the ocean? Well, scorpions are mostly active at night. You can see the fact that it avoids light makes it so, adapts it in such a way that it be down in its burrow or under a piece of wood like this during the day, and so that it doesn't actually experience the extreme heat of the desert. Oh, oh, look at him, he hops. What's it called? Kangaroo rat. What does he eat in the, in the desert? He eats seeds, mostly. How did nature help it adapt to desert life? First of all, it lives in a burrow underground like this, and down there it would be very moist, very humid. It would only come out of the burrow well, after the nighttime temperatures had gone way down and the humidity had come up. Now, they have special kidneys which uh, extract most of the moisture out of the uh, urine before it's excreted. So it's excreted almost in a dry form. So they don't drink any water at all? No, none at all. It doesn't require any water. They live off the water in the air and off the water in whatever seeds in they the eat? In the seeds, yes. Uh -huh. Is this a tarantula? Yes, it is. What kind of food do they eat out here? Crickets, grasshoppers, beetles, and other insects like that. Sometimes maybe baby mice or other small creatures. You want to let it walk in your hand? <laughs> you don't, I just hold the other hand out. Let it walk in that. You can just keep changing hands like that. The one thing we have to be careful is not to drop them because they uh, are rather delicate and would break. Really? Uh -huh. They're a burrowing spider and they live in the ground uh, digging their own hole from the, when they're a very, very tiny little creature, about an eighth of an inch long, and then they oh, no. enlarge the burrow as they grow up. It takes 10 to 12 years for them to mature. Are they always out in the sun? On cool days, they are, like today, but uh, of course, if it's hot in the desert, which it usually is, they're out at night. So they spend more time out at night than they do the daytime. Oh, it just tickles when they're walking on you. Mm-hmm, it does. How hot would it have to get before it would um, go underground? Probably 85, 90 degrees and the ground temperature, you know, where it was walking, and then they would uh, start.
stay underneath. Is it going to bite me? Stop oh. moving. Oh, no. Can I put him down on the ground? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Can you see how he walks? Spiders have sucking stomach, which sucks in only liquid. So they liquefy everything with the mouth, and then it's drawn into the stomach as a liquid. Janet, this is Mark. Hello, Hi. Mark. How are you? Oh, and that's Trini. She's usually a little livelier than that, but she was up all night with the sniffles. Do you oh. know what this is? Yeah, it's a bat. It's a sleeping bat. Close. It's a hibernating bat. Dr. Twenty is a biologist at the University of Missouri, and she's an expert on hibernating animals. Well, isn't sleeping and hibernating the same thing? Actually not. The uh, bat has a heart rate and a respiration rate much slower and is much colder. When he's hibernating? When he's hibernating than when he's sleeping. Is he real cold now? Would you like to feel him? Oh, he's really cold. Feel him, Lise. What's his temperature now about? Shall we take it and see? Sure. Let's use this thermometer. Okay. Pretty. Where should I put this? Well, let's put it right here under this bat's wing. Under the wing right there. Right, close to his body. Mm -hmm. It won't be quite his body temperature, but close. Can let's you see. read it? Yeah, it's 36.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's pretty close to freezing. Well, now let's try and measure his heartbeat. With this you know, just put this on top? Right. Well, his heart rate is a lot slower than it would be when he is active. How many beats um, per minute would that be about? Well, I didn't count them, but when they're hibernating, uh, they beat about five beats per minute. Really? And what when they're active, they're uh, much faster than that, probably about um, 10 beats. Per second. Per second? second. Uh-huh. How about their temperature? When they're not hibernating, what's the, their normal temperature? Well, the normal temperature of a bat is uh, very much like ours, because they're mammals, too. So it's very close to 98.6? Yes, it is. Wow. It's amazing the amount of body changes that they go through as they get warmer. Oh, yes. Hello, Trini. And uh, we're waking up this bat. A bat? Wait, aren't they supposed to sleep during the daytime? Unlike some of us, I'm really sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> well, this isn't a, a sleeping bat, it's a hibernating bat. And Dr. Twenty is a scientist who studies hibernation. Oh, wow, that's fascinating. You'd think that they would think of something else besides hibernation. Well, uh, some bats do. Some bats uh, migrate. They do? Where? Well, they go south. Oh, that's yeah. just like the monarch butterflies. Yeah. This is a monarch butterfly. In the fall, as the weather gets cooler, monarchs in the northern climates shiver to warm up their flight muscles. Soon they begin their long migration to Mexico and Southern California. also migrate to warmer climates, where food is more plentiful throughout the winter months. Well, this bat is uh, nearly awake now. I think we might try to take his heart rate again okay. and see if we can hear a change. There's still some jelly on there, okay? I think so. That's his heart. It's bad. Amazing. It sounds like a motor. It sure does. <laughs> you know, I still feel sorry for animals that have to live in cold weather. Oh, I don't think you need to, Trini. Animals have many ways of protecting themselves from severe cold.
In this cold climate, these bears search for the perfect spot in which to hibernate. He's found it. But for the animals who stay awake for the winter months, nature provides protection. This ptarmigan, brown colored in the summer, turns white for the winter months making him less likely to be found and eaten by hungry predators. Finding food is a constant problem throughout the winter months in this harsh landscape. In still colder climates above the Arctic Circle, life goes on for these walruses. These seals are protected from sub-zero temperatures by their thick coat and layers of fat. Antarctica, these penguins fish in the icy waters. So do these killer whales. The penguins have decided to postpone their fishing until the waters are less crowded. Well, this bat is now totally awake. Shall we uh, take his temperature again yeah. and uh, see? Uh, Be careful there. Yeah. I'll get this real close to his body. Right. Okay. It's moving up pretty quick. 98.4. That's really close to us. Yeah. Hey, can we take his heartbeat again? Yes. Okay, move over. Come on, don't <laughs> eat it. This is to take your heartbeat with. Oh, yeah. That's so fast. Yeah, that's really fast. Well, we really come a long way. Mm -hmm. That must be nearly 500 beats per minute now, and it was only five beats per minute when he was hibernating. Mm -hmm. That's a really? big difference. Oh. What are you going to do with him now? Well, let's put him in this cage. I brought a cage for oh, him. Oh, good. Well, we want him to be safe, oh, okay. right? <laughs> let's put this right up here. Hey, oh. listen to him. He's uh. making little squeaking sounds. Well, that's because he just woke up. He's yawning. Oh, no, mm -hmm. he's making some kind of sound. I think maybe the bloodhound gang should figure this out. Whenever there's trouble, with there on the double, we're the bloodhound gang. If you've got the crime, we've got the time, we're the bloodhound gang. Mm. 
Vicky saw a purse snatched and chased the thief. As she was about to return the purse, Vicky saw two men kidnap Mrs. Crimple. In the purse, there was only a blank piece of paper. By scribbling with a soft charcoal pencil, a secret message written in salt water was revealed. Sounds like Tennessee to me. Mr. Aces, alias Mr. Big, called and said he'd be right over for the purse. The Bloodhound Gang substituted a blank sheet of paper and hid the real message. But it was Mrs. Frimple who came for the purse. She denied she had been kidnapped. Her story's fishy. Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Secret Message. Let's have it. Have what? Uh, do you have an appointment? Knuckles, give them my card. Uh, well, which one, Bob? Pick any one. Aces model airplanes specializing in radio control. So you must be Mr. Aces. Hand over the purse. How's your aunt? <laughs> All shook up. Can't leave a room. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, kids. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Mr. Aces, but we don't have the purse. Oh, give me that. Anything happens on the streets, and I know about it. You got the purse. Had it. Your aunt picked it up a few minutes ago. You told me the old lady was... Miss Punk's a lion, boss. You tear this room apart to find it. <laughs> Want me to put these kids on ice, boss? No, no. Bunch of numbers. What do they know? <laughs> Come on. Let's see if there's a Tennessee Bay around here. Anyone remember all those numbers? Start it with the nine. Twenty-five. Nine twenty-five. 25. Hey, that's today's date. September 25th. Here it is. Tennessee Bay. Just outside the city. What was the rest of the message? 1730. Hey, if the first set is the date, the second set could be the time. That's the way they tell time on ships. Great, but what time does that make it? You don't start over at noon. Like 1 o'clock is 1300 hours, and 2 o'clock is 1400, and so on. Then 1730. Subtract 12, you get... You get 5.30. And that's 5.30 today. I wonder what's going to happen. Ships. Smuggling? Of course. At Tennessee Bay. I can't see anything. Wait. There's a ship over there. It's cozy. Is there room in there for one more? Mrs. Frizzle. Police Detective Monroe. Did you shadow us here? If you were clever enough to switch the message, I figured you were clever enough to lead me to the pickup spot. Mr. Big has eyes in the back of his head. Every time we put a tail on him, he leads us on a wild goose chase. My partner stakes himself out further up the road. Hey, listen. What is it? Sounds like a model airplane to me. It is. We figured he was using that shop of his as a front. Now all I gotta do is find the radio frequency he's using to guide the plane. Got it. There. It's turning this way. I see it. Now it's following our signal. 
is heading right for us. Think it's Aces? Well, what's going to be? Look for evidence. They must be smuggling something inside. From the ship out there? Right. Look, what's this? Diamonds. Don't move. Hijacking model airplanes. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Smuggling diamonds. Tisk, indeed. You're under arrest. Oh, says who? Says me. Knuckles, drop the gun. Now put your mitts behind you. You too. And turn around. No, not another secret message. That's no secret. Well, what does it mean? Whenever there's trouble, we're, we're there, there on the double. Mr. Bloodhound isn't here. <laughs> Today, we've been learning how plants and animals can survive in places that are very hot or very cold. Sandy, animals have many different ways of adapting to warm weather and to cold weather. Some animals travel far away to spend the winter in warm climates. But don't you do that. I'll keep you warm right here. Janet, can people hibernate? No. Why not? Well, when they get too cold, their heart stops beating. Oh, that's oh, no that's good. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, once you got interested in hibernation, how did you get started? What did you learn about it? Well, my husband was interested in hibernation, and he'd been studying it for a while, and uh, he kept telling me how things were and how interesting this was, and after a while, uh, we decided to work together and uh, study hibernation. And now we've been working together for the last 15 years, studying hibernation of bats and of ground squirrels. And, uh, of course, the nice part is uh, getting an animal and having one that uh, you like, this sort of soft and furry, and uh, cute and interesting to watch. Well, Watching animals is a lot of fun. I hope we didn't wake you up too fast. I mean, it was all in the interest of science. 321 Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.